In this online lecture, we're going to learn about diazonium salts. And what we're going to see is that the diazonium salt enables the addition of many types of substituents on a benzene ring. We're also going to see, number two, that the diazonium salt enables the synthesis of substituted benzene rings that, up until this point, could not be synthesized. So let me show you how that works here. For instance, right here you have a molecule, a benzene ring, with an NH2 group on it, an amine. And you're reacting NaNO2 in HCl at 0 degrees Celsius. Which means this, in order to make a diazonium, you have to have already an amine group on a benzene ring. And again, if you react the NaNA2 with HCl with it, you will get this molecule right here, which happens to be a diazonium salt. Notice it's a salt because the N2 group on the benzene ring, one of the nitrogens has a positive formal charge. And then you have a Cl- combining with it, creating the salt. Just a note here, NaNO2 is not the only reagent that can pull this off. You can also use HNO2, or sometimes it's represented as HONO, or HONO. Now, let's see what this diazonium salt can do. Watch how many reactions we can perform with this. For instance, we can add H3O plus and heat, and that'll turn the N2Cl into OH. You could also react it with CuBr and replace it with a Br. You could also react it with CuCl, and that'll put a Cl on the benzene ring. And you could also use CuCn, which will put a nitrile on a benzene ring. Together, these reactions are called the Sandmeyer reactions. I just want to point something out here. Notice, we already know how to put a Br on a benzene ring by doing halogenation. But up to this point, we didn't know how to put a nitrile CN group on a benzene ring. So this is one of the great features of diazonium is that we can perform that reaction. But there's even more stuff we can do here. For instance, you can add Ki and that'll put an iodide on a benzene ring. You can also react HBF4. That puts a fluorine on. These are called the Shaman reactions. And you can even do this. You can react it with H3PO2 and replace the N2 group with just a hydrogen. We're gonna see how valuable this last reaction is in a few minutes. What I recommend is that you make either flashcards or do whatever it takes to memorize all these reactions. We definitely want these at our fingertips. We're not concerned with mechanism, at least not in this lecture. We're just knowing what a diazonium can do. So let me show you that here with a sample problem. Here it says provide the necessary reagents to synthesize the molecule on the right from the molecule on the left. Now up to this point, we would look at this molecule and say that that's impossible to synthesize. And here's why. Remember, the first group we could possibly put on is a Br. And it doesn't matter which one, we would just put the first Br on, let's say this one. But remember, Br, he is an ortho pair directing activator, which means if we go to add the second Br, we could only add it ortho or pair it to him. And here the Brs are meta. So, like I said, this seems impossible, but however, not with the diazonium. Well, let's keep our target molecule here down below in the lower left so we can keep our eye on the prize here and watch how we synthesize this molecule from benzene using a diazonium. The first thing we'll do here is do nitration of a benzene ring. We learned about this in a previous online lecture. It's one of our electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. It puts an NO2 group on a benzene ring. Then what we'll do is we'll add Br2 and FeBr3. And remember, NO2 happens to be a meta-directing deactivator. So the Br is going to have to add meta to him, which ends up with this molecule right here. Now let's keep going here. Now that we have this molecule, now we're ready to add the SNHClOH reaction. Remember what this did? We learned this in a previous online lecture. That turns an NO2 group on a benzene ring into an NH2 group. And this is key here because remember, in order to make a diazonium salt, 
you have to have that amine group already on the benzene ring. So now we're ready to create the diazonium salt. Remember the reagents are NaNO2 or remember HNO2 and HCl. This is going to turn the amine NH2 group into a diazonium N2Cl group. And by the way, diazonium, di means two, azo is just basically nitrogen in organic chemistry. So since it has two nitrogens, that's where it gets its name from, diazonium. Now, we're still not at our target molecule here in the lower left. We have to just perform one more reaction. And this is all you do. Remember, one of the reactions that we learned here is if you add CuBr, that replaces the diazonium with a Br. And notice right there is our target molecule. So basically, with the diazonium salt, we are making molecules that were previously impossible to make. This is why we need this reaction in our arsenal of reactions for our next orgo exam, so that we have these kind of options. What's key here is the fact that, remember, in order to make the diazonium salt, we need an NH2 group. But remember, in order to get an NH2 group on a benzene ring, you have to first put an NO2 group, like what you saw in this example. And remember, an NO2 group is meta-directing. So the strategy here, overall, was adding the Br at the point of the synthesis after the NO2 was added, so that the Br would be meta to the NO2 group. And then eventually, when we turn the NO2 group into a diazonium, we'll eventually replace it with the Br. That's the real strategy that we're simply learning here. But that's not the only thing we can use it for. Look at this sample problem here. We want to synthesize this molecule on the right from benzene. And again, we have the same issue. All BRs are orthopair directing. So if you add the first BR, you're not going to add the others meta to it. So how can we do this? Well, let's keep our eye on the prize here. Let's keep them in the lower left corner and let's start our synthesis here. Now remember, what we're learning here is the strategy. Don't worry at this point if you wouldn't think to do something like this. Watch how I pull this off. The first thing I'm gonna do is add HNO3, H2SO4, which remember puts the nitro group on a benzene ring. And then I'm gonna add the SNHCLOH. Remember, that turns the NO2 group into an amine NH2 group. Now, watch what happens here. Remember, NH2 is an orthopair directing activator. And in fact, remember, he's the top on our list. He is the most activating substituent. And remember, we saw in a previous online lecture that if you use Br2 and FeBr3, the NH2 group is so activating that it ends up over substituting. And remember what that means. NH2, remember, is an orthopara directing activator. So it ends up adding BRs ortho to him and para to him, but at all positions because of his over reactivity. Think about this for a second. Look at our target molecule in the lower left. The BRs themselves, notice, all happen to be meta to each other. So we're really close to our target molecule. All we need to do is just get rid of the NH2 group somehow. Well, that's where the diazonium comes in play here. What we're gonna do is again add the NaNO2, which will turn the NH2 into a diazonium. Now that we have that set up here, the last thing we need to do is use this reaction, which is H3PO2. Remember, we saw that this reaction replaces the diazonium with the hydrogen, therefore simply getting rid of the diazonium and leaving behind our three BRs all meta to each other. So basically here, the diazonium reaction gives us a great strategy to make all kinds of molecules. At this point, we could almost synthesize any benzene type molecule that we're after. So what are our key points here? Well, number one, we saw that the diazonium salt enables the addition of many types of substituents on a benzene ring. We also saw number two, the diazonium salt enables the synthesis of substituted benzene rings that, up until this point, could not be synthesized.